And it's 10 a.m. right here in Lagos, Nigeria. Great to have you join us right here on Business Morning. I'm Ladi Williams. First off, let's uh, take a look at what's happening uh, with the market, starting with the grain markets. Now we see Chicago uh, corn climb more than 1% uh, today, and soybeans runs after a weekly report uh, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture signal that the condition of both crops deteriorated. And now uh, wheat uh, climbed for a second session in a row, although expectations of higher Ukrainian uh, supplies, limited gains. Uh, Crop Watch uh, producers in Western U.S. corn belts trimmed ratings across the board after a hot and mostly dry week uh, last week, though recent uh, rains have bolstered uh, prospects in the east. Uh, well, uh, uh, the market uh, analysts are seeing this as uh, a prompt for uh, the grain market to actually come down in prices at this time. Let's look at the uh, oil market. Now, oil prices dipped in early uh, trade today on latest progress in last-ditch talks to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear accord, which would clear the way to boost its crude exports uh, in a tight market. Brent crude futures fell about 27 cents to $96.38 a barrel in early trade, pairing a 1.8% gain from the previous session, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude uh, declined about 24 cents to $90.52 uh, a barrel after climbing 2% in the previous session. The European Union late uh, on Monday put forward a final text to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, awaiting approvals uh, from Washington and Tehran. A senior EU official uh, made the confirmation a final decision was on the way and was expected within very, very uh, few weeks. Seems like We've seen oil prices below $100 uh, for a while now. Now, uh, back here, one of Nigeria's leading financial institutions, First Bank, and uh, payment system provider, Verb, have rewarded some of their loyal customers with mouth-watering uh, gifts through the Transact and Win promo. The presentation of the gift items at the bank's head office in Lagos at a grand finale, which was witnessed by representatives of the National Lottery Commission, the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, as well as Lagos State Lotteries and Gaming Authority. Take a listen. The 14-week partnership promo was designed to reward customers for their continued usage and adoption of the Verve card for various digitally driven transactions. Speaking at the presentation of the prize, First Bank's group executive, e-business and retail products, Mr. Chuma Izerim, explained that the bank initiated the promo to appreciate its 8 million Verve card holders. It is worthy of note that First Bank's debit card make up a sizable percentage of our card portfolio. And this promo is aimed at appreciating our card holders. On his part, the Chief Executive Officer of Verb International, Vincent Bonundes, says his company's relationship with First Bank goes a long way. He also restates the company's commitment to continue providing secure and innovative payment solutions to its customers. Those that have chosen us as their preferred option for cards, um, and we look to rewarding them for their loyalty. Um, this is the reason behind um, this collaboration with First Bank to do this national consumer promo. It's now time to announce the lucky customers of the promo, including the grand prize winner. I didn't expect it because I, initially I thought it was a scam because when they called, someone called me from First Bank that I won a car. I said, won a car. Congratulations. I said, say, look at this one. I didn't say anything. I said, I should come the following day to their office. When I got to my, told my father, look what I had. Was someone called me this evening, said I won a car that I should, uh, um, first bank, promo, Vapo. OK. My wife told me to go there. So far, more than 2,600 customers have received over 50 million naira worth of prizes in the First Bank Verve card promo. And uh, now we're going to be looking at uh, other matters in the commodity space that's uh, coming uh, in a moment. We've seen that a lot of uh, commodity price movements have been quite volatile uh, for a while now. But after the break, we'll drill down on that conversation. Do stay with us. This is Business Morning.
Welcome back. You're still watching uh, Business Morning Live on Channel Television. Now for Commodities Market Update, we have Juliet Adenuga, Head of Treasury at Financial Derivatives Company, joining us right here for the first time in our brand new studio. Great to have you. Thank you, Larry, for having me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I've been so seeing much. a lot of volatility, you know, with this uh, commodities market. Looking at oil now, we're seeing it below $100, and I'm hoping that it stays below $100 because okay. That transcends into lower energy costs. You know, we've been seeing rising energy costs, yes. which has been stoking inflation now. Yes. So what's driving sentiment in the oil market right now? Okay, I think the culprit for now is the bill passed by the U.S. Senate on Sunday. The 750 million tax, um, health and um, climate bill. You know, it's also called the inflation reduction bill. You know, because um, the oil sector or the oil, global oil market is very, very sentimental. It can be driven by just speculations. It can be driven by perceptions or expectations. Those are enough to drive the market. And we also know that um, inflation figure is going to come out for U.S. probably sometime down the line this week or early next week. And already people are already speculating that there will be something less than what they had the 9.1% of, of June. So if, for instance, it gets to that point of maybe I don't know, we don't know yet what it's going to be, but imagine if it gets to, if we see like 8.8%, that will just show a kind of you know, restoration of confidence in people or by people, people trusting more that there's going to be a change. We have to understand that in developed economies, futuristic or let me say expected inflation, counts more, or makes more impact, or is, is more recognized than historical, because they always look forward, and they expect something better. So with, with what's happened, that this bill passed now, there is hope. The people have hope. They are expecting that, in reality, that it's going to turn And we know already that um, there's been a little change in the price of gasoline from five naira a liter to four naira. So that is, is, a, is a positive, yeah, in dollars, yeah. I mean in dollars. Yeah. It's already a positive sign. So people are hoping, are expectant, you know, with the outcome, well, let's see what the inflation rate will be when it comes out and see. It's going to show, once there is a kind of reflection, it might not be very major, but that's a sign that there is a positive change and something is going towards the right direction. Right, and that, that five naira per liter would be a dream I would like to see actually happen. happen if that happens, that would be amazing. I'll be filling be my tank with just five little. naira. <laughs> that would be incredible. But, you know, looking at this uh, market now, you know, we saw that, you know, impressive jobs report last yes. week talking about the U.S. How does that play into, you know, the Fed's upcoming you know, decision because we, it's, it's almost showing like, you know, we might still see, you know, good demand for oil in the U.S. Yes, that is what is happening. We have to understand that already there is that hope that things are going to get better. That is why the price of oil, you know, started, you know, itching up immediately because people are already expecting that with this bill passed, it means that there's going to be a change in so many indices that had, you know, pulled this inflation. If exogenous factors start to correct themselves on their own, that is a very positive sign. So it is expected that with the, with the inching up of the price in oil, that is a sign that people are, expected that, are expecting that there will be more jobs. They're expecting that, um, you know, people will be needing fuel to drive, to go to work, or like, you know, people will also be needing companies or, you know, employers of labor will be needing more of gasoline or diesel for their operation. So it's a, a sign that there is like a kind of, the, earth, the world is still there, the recession, it's not as if it's eroded, but there is a sign that things are getting better, there's an improvement. Yeah, we, the, we know what recession fears yes. actually do uh, to the price of oil, which would actually bring it down. Down further. But we don't want recession, so <laughs> there's so, so much going on there. But now, bringing it back home, now we see uh, Nigeria, uh, OPEC increased our quota yeah. to about 1.8 uh, million Three. barrels per, per barrel yeah. uh, per, day, per day. But day. we're seeing, you know, we can't even meet up, you know, with the existing yes. quota. How are you seeing that? Okay, I'm really seeing it. It's really sad because this is a time, I would, let me put it this way, at a time that um, most resource, natural resource or oil-dependent economies in Africa in particular, let me use Africa and MENA, Middle East and North, North America, those resource-abundant nations had to deal with some particular 
you know, bad elements that we are peculiar to them, like the resource course, the Dutch disease. You look at things like institutional decay, rent seeking. Those are issues inherent in resource, in resource, in natural resource dependent or abundant economies. They have been dealing with this over the years. It's a pity that now that there's this price, you know, this benefit from the price rallying around oil, Nigeria is nowhere to be found because of our personal, you know, internal issues that we've not been able to deal with over the years. We've had this increase over time. It's not today. This one is not the, this last meeting is not the first time. They keep, you know, inching us forward. This is about 30,000 barrels per day increase. It's always been there. But we're still on 1.3 million barrels per day. And we have uh, we have a, a limit of 1.83 million. That's, we have a shortage of, a, of about 500,000 barrels per day. You know, and this is just because of we, we hear ourselves talking about things like vandalism of pipelines in the Niger Delta alone. Uh, I, I was made to understand from an article that we have up to 200,000 um, pipes vandalized in that region alone. So you get to see things like oil theft as an issue. People are stealing this oil. People are refining this oil. There is also disinvestment from that sector. Um, major players are more interested in, other, in going to invest in capital, ex, you know, going to go into capital expenditure in some other countries like Kenya and around. Nigeria is beginning to be neglected because of the major insecurity issue we're facing. It's very difficult for even these major players to come and say they are going to you know, be exploring from there because anything can happen, they get kidnapped, sometimes they get killed. So these issues are what I don't see like a near, a sudden change it's a pity that at this time there's this rallying. We can't benefit. People are cashing in now. All you dependent economies are cashing in in billions. Right. They are cashing in in billions. I, I had a report that we have some other projects abandoned all over the place in Nigeria that if, you know, taken up and finished could bring up to around the 1.4 million bar barrels per day for us, which will just, you know, get down to like saying between 150 million um, $150 million to $200 million per day. Imagine what that can do to us or right. do for us as a but nation. we need revenue. We need revenue uh, so time. much. That is even the crux of all the issues happening around the foreign exchange depreciation and stuff. It's because of no inflow. But if we have exports, steady exports, where we can earn, you know, forex, it will go a long way in solving so much of our problems. But we've not been able to be honest as, with, with ourselves to deal with our issues. People are cheating. People are robbing the government. The government is losing revenue from these bushes in those pipelines. People are there vandalizing, stealing, even refining. And these are people that have the mouth. I, when I mean have the mouth, people that cannot just be shut down. So there are people that, that have the power that should be, you know, people that should set good example. Maybe the government should do more in protecting these pipelines. The, that would be a good start. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, don't, I won't say the government hasn't been doing a lot, but it's not easy. People get killed. People get killed. We, we put all our security. You, know, you remember we have other issues of security we are dealing with. Right. It's, all, it's not only pipeline. Yeah. Are we going to abandon the security of lives that's even inching it close to cities like Abuja? You know, so it's really a big issue for yeah. us. Security, yes. securing the pipeline, securing your lives uh, yes. and, and, and property. ensuring that we don't have those leakages because those leakages are no more little. They are major right. and they are stopping us from benefiting from what is happening in the global oil. And oil I'm talking sector. about, you know, bringing in more foreign exchange, you know, into the country. I saw that uh, our reserve, there was some accretion there. It uh, got up to about a percentage point. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, happening at a time when there's also conversations mm -hmm. about our reserve, you know, uh, capacity. Yes. You know, some are saying it's 30 something uh, billion dollars. Others are saying it's about yeah. half that. Yeah. You know, we still have all of that issue, but there's accretion yes, right now. Yes, there is, because, you know, this oil price increase immediately will reflect. It's not really a major... It's not a major increase yet. Yes. And you know that with what is happening, this perception of you know, inflation tapering down, global inflation. It's going to affect our, our exchange by pass-through effect of import. You know, we always have imported inflation. If prices taper down, you know what is happening within the Black Sea region. There's, you know, importation, you know, at least they're beginning to bring in corn. And so there is that likelihood that the imported infl inflation we are experiencing or, or our import bill right. is going to reduce a little bit. And that is where this, you know, increasing coming right. from and then this small change in positive change in oil price 
All right, so um, another issue now, the CBN Ways and Means uh, hit uh, 20 trillion. That's a, a new high in June. Uh, should we be worried yes, at this we point? we should be worried. We should be worried because it's one of the problems we have in this economy where the central bank is funding the, you know, deficit, the um, budget deficit of the federal government. CBN shouldn't, you know. You know, CBN should be more concerned with monetary issues, maintaining price stability, and allow all those other physical aspects. You no, know, there should be a separation. Because if everything is modeled up together, we're not going to get the best of it. Now we are having about 20 billion naira as ways and means. That is really, really ridiculous because you need to understand that also, this 20 billion is not part of our total debt. That's 20 trillion, huh? Um, I mean trillion. Yeah. It's not part of our total debt. If we, it's not part of the total debt we have, if we add it to the about 40, 40 something uh, trillion Naira debt we have, that is going to be a very crazy figure we are seeing here. And uh, the thing is that there is a limit to you know, the extent the federal government should borrow from CBN, there should be a, a limit. And now interest rates are going up. The cost of um, borrowing is going to also go up for the federal government. So I think that in, in reality, what we should be looking at is how to generate internal revenue. Instead of just borrowing, we borrow externally, we borrow within in short. This um, ways and means of CBN, you know, you know, you know it just it operates in two ways, either by overdraft or also like promissory notes in like another form of glorified overdraft to, to the uh, federal government. But what matters most here is the fact that the federal government is going to even experience higher cost of borrowing mm -hmm. by reason of the, of the interest rate increase by the MPC in recent times. So it's something that they should look into closely because if you are pumping in more money into the system and you don't have a corresponding output growth, you are going to be fueling inflation the more. Right. And... Uh... July, we, we're, we're supposed to get that July uh, inflation numbers. Yes. What are you expecting? Okay, for us in um, FDC, we are looking at, um, we still think that inflation rate will still inch up a little bit to like, let's say 9.1, 9. 9.7% um, 9 or thereabout because, you know, oh, we can't 19. just, 19.7%, um, yeah. we're not just going to wish away inflation that way. Even though there's a little bit of change in what is happening in the global economy, there's supposed to be a time lag for exogenous events right. to be transmitted to domestic prices. So we're going to let that time lag you know, wear out. Let's say for another month or two, the domestic um, you know, price level might still go up. The inflation rate might still go up a bit. But by the third month, there might be a kind of tapering of the, but you, you understand that the official inflation rates might not be the real, you know, inflation rate. Yeah, I remember to, we got yes, that uh, figure from the from, FDC yes, for the, what the real of, rate would actually would look be, like, which so, is quite scary at this point. Because when you go to the supermarket, you've seen, you know, these incredible prices and, you know, yeah, food prices. Yeah, they're very too, incredible. They're and really you know, high. it's just the food basket. It's still the same food basket yeah, food we basket. use and conduct econometric analysis. And we still see that it's not just that 19... But you yeah. see very crazy figures if you twerk it as it's supposed to be when you have to change your basket and work on some things. Yeah, we, need to, to, we need to work the, on those baskets at this point to get the true figure. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Juliet Denuga, Head of Treasury Financial Directors Company. It was great having your perspective. Thank you for having me. All right, now, we're going to break. Now, when we come back, uh, we take the conversation further. We look at job creation in Nigeria. Now, to the moment, do stay with us. This is Business Morning. Welcome back. Still watching Business Morning live on Channel Television. Now let's uh, take a look at what's happening with, with the markets. Uh, we saw uh, 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 it opened the week down again, and we have uh, Ine John McQua, uh, with the details now. In it. it's, uh, it's another... Another red day. Red opening <laughs> uh, yesterday, and uh, we saw MTN again 
and uh, most of those uh, bellwether stocks yes. pulling down the market. I think GT Co. also contributed yeah, GTCO, yeah. to the red markets we had yesterday. But uh, one thing that we've noticed is whatever direction the MTN Nigeria goes, the right. market just follows. Just follows. Yes, uh, that's even... why I said MTN sneezes, the market catches <laughs> the market cold. market catches the cold. Quite interesting. <laughs> All right, well, just before we go to the equities market, let's see what happened at the fixed income market yesterday. Uh, starting with the federal government bonds, yesterday we saw that there were 22 deals much better than we saw on Friday, though. Uh, that one of the most favored uh, is the 2042 January uh, securities was uh, well favored yesterday, and they made a 10.95, almost 11 billion naira. From there, we we'll go to the Treasury bonds. The Treasury bonds uh, sale yesterday was only two. That's a number of deals valued at just about four billion naira. Still a quiet market, but as our analyst said yesterday, perhaps we're expecting uh, some life. To to come there some liquidity should stream into that market very soon and then uh, let's go to the open market uh, or more yesterday also had just two deals uh, you see that the federal government bonds was the most favored yesterday got, got a lot of investors attention but of course liquidity is still squeezed and it's very obvious in the market and then uh, from there we go to the central bank uh, the central bank bills of yesterday had 12 uh, the federal government's area seems to be uh, getting a lot of confidence there september 2022 in fact uh, all the securities there will mature this year november september and october so I guess that's why we saw some, I mean, people do not want to keep their money for long this time. They just want to get into the market, get whatever they can, and then move out. A lot of uncertainty in the investment uh, environment these days in Nigeria. Of course, with a lot of things going on around the world, inflation and the politics that's going on in Nigeria. From there, let's go to the NESB, NESD market, the unlisted market yesterday. It was in the positive added 100,000, 1 billion naira to eat uh, market cap. It's been staying on this 1 trillion naira for a bit. Uh, we know that it's just hovering there, but at least it's added something. And then it's uh, 0.38% on the NSI there on the activity charts for yesterday we see that there were 12 deals valued at 125 million naira and the volume was 543 well from there let's go to that market we've been waiting for the equities market and so I fed yesterday as we have already talked about it was in the red uh, marginally though 0.03 we hope it doesn't go past this and we're still retaining that 27 trillion naira you know going back and forth but at least we still have that 27 trillion naira and we do hope that it is being returned. Let's look at the activity chart. Uh, now uh, all in the green compared to Friday. Uh, it's volume, value and deals. Deals supposed to be about 5,000 but I mean uh, we had 2.11 billion. On Friday we had about 1 billion so uh, we had uh, some more market money right there. And then looking at the sectors it was a mixed breed yesterday. Banking uh, because we have people like uh, GT Co, FBNH, a lot of profit taking happened on those uh, uh, securities yesterday so it's no wonder that the counter was down more than 1%. Consumer goods was up. Industrial goods just marginally almost made it to the the green also insurance uh, doesn't really you know move the market that much unfortunately if not gaining more than one percent would have put the market in the green oil and gas was unchanged it's uh, supposed to be a good time for the uh, oil and gas industry uh, but not, not so in Nigeria. We've been talking a whole lot about oil theft and all of that. Uh, we're supposed to have Peter Abe uh, joining us now to help us understand the backstory of uh, what took place in the market yesterday. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Good to have you, Peter. So uh, tell us uh, what, for instance, happened in the oil and gas. Was it that there was no attraction, whatever, in the oil and gas counter yesterday? Uh, well, uh, just like we said, uh, the major actions were seen in the banks and a uh, few consumer names. Uh, oil and gas was basically uh, quiet. Uh, just later in the day, we saw the news about Seplat, which was after the market close, and uh, we started seeing reactions uh, to that news this morning. So it was lifted to as high as 1,500 this morning, and we continue to see the interest in that name at the moment. So, uh, with all of the conversations going on with Exxon Mobil and Seplat, how is Seplat looking now? Is it looking attractive to investors, or 
is there is the uncertainty streaming to investors' uh, sentiment around that stock? Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at uh, the potential, uh, uh, the increase in the oil that uh, Sepulite is going to get from that uh, deal, I think is a good one for them. And looking at the consent they have from the president, I think that is also something that investors have factored in and it's helping the, uh, uh, I mean, this up, like I said earlier, up to 1,500 this morning. And we feel that this will continue as investors read more meaning into this news. All right, so what should we expect at the close of trade today, Peter? Uh, well, it's it's been it's been quiet. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, most of the names we've been seeing actions in them are banks and few consumer names. Uh, we expect uh, actions in banks to continue because most of their names have not released their Q2 numbers. Uh, most of them are auditing their numbers. So as soon as we see uh, some of these uh, numbers rolling into the market, uh, that may actually uh, stop some of the actions we see in banks. But we expect that to continue today. So. Um, Give or take, we may likely see markets uh, uh, close in, in the uh, negative region, just the way we saw it yesterday. Um, if uh, the profit taking we saw in MTN uh, also continued this morning, I would feel if that is not reversed, we may see that uh, draw market into negative region again. Hmm. So, uh, you know, for two Fridays now, we've had four negative trades, and then on Friday, we have a positive. Do you see this Friday turning green? Uh, well, um, the prices are low at the moment, and uh, from the way that I've seen market over time is a cycle. Uh, so the more these prices are going lower, the rest, uh, investors will start seeing uh, interest in them. And don't forget the fundamentals are good, uh, so that we cannot dispute that. I think it's more of sentiment, and once mar uh, market investors are seeing these markets are cheaper, uh, they will start coming in. So at the end of the week, we may see it come up again. And uh, we saw this in the last one or two weeks, so the cycle will still continue uh, up uh, probably at the end of the week. All right, uh, Peter Abe, thank you so much. Uh, well, we do hope, as you said, that since uh, we have a dip now, that uh, people like Laddie, <laughs> you know people like Laddie like... will make the most of, of the yeah. dip. And then by Friday, we'll see another green and, and see the bull roaring. And I think that will bring some joy to our hearts. Exactly. If you're like me, you don't play with dips. When you see them, you take them. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, everyone should know that. Uh, I think investments these days are not uh, what you do with portfolio investments. Right. You it's, have to uh, be ready to wait. Yeah, it doesn't go by the books, you mm -hmm. know, at this time. Mm -hmm. All right, Nate, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right, now uh, we're still going to be looking at how the uh, markets are going to close later today. We'll get uh, details about that on News at 10. We'll see if, you know, the market can, you know, try and get some uh, life, you know, back in at, at this point. All right, we're moving on to another conversation. At a time where inflation, cost of living keeps rising, uh, job creation has become even more important as businesses struggle with rising uh, input costs. Well, join us in the studio now. Zukinebo Dare, MD, Edo State Skills uh, Development Agency. Great to have you finally <laughs> get here. I know it wasn't thank easy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Great to have to you. Be here. Yeah, so what would you say the level of uh, technology acceptance you know, is like in Edo State? Okay, so um, I would say, first of all, you That's know. That's before your agency exactly, started. Exactly, yeah. because. Um, one of the things the governor promised to do was to create jobs in Edo State. In fact, he promised 200,000. So um, we had to realize that we had to um, do an analysis to determine what sectors would give us those jobs. And tech came up really big on that list and really high. But we found out that there was, a, there was low adoption, number one. There was low access to the internet. So um, we, we had a lot of young people with bright ideas who wanted to go into tech, but once they finish university or once they have the opportunity, they pack their bags and they're off to Lagos here. Yeah? So, right. of course, we had to do something about that to make sure that we could um, generate jobs in tech and connect young people to all the opportunities that are, that are there. Quite interesting. Are there, yeah. like, uh, specific you know, strategy areas your agency deploys, you know, to help with uh, this job creation? Oh, definitely. So for job creation in general, we work in five sectors, um, construction, manufacturing, agriculture, then the two big ones for us, technology and the creative sector. And the strategies that we employ have to do with, um, so what we, our mission, we say, is to 
attract the demand for highly skilled talent to Edo State. So attracting the demand includes investment promotion, it includes showcasing the talent we have, and then we don't want to attract the demand and then you come and then you don't find what you're looking for. So providing the supply of that talent. So our popular name is Edo Jobs, but our real official name is Edo State Skills Development Agency. So the strategy is upskill people in in-demand skills, things the industry is looking for, and then when you attract the demand, there's a perfect match and the young people get opportunities. Quite interesting, getting Thank that you. perfect uh, match at this kind of time. But exactly. what would you say the impact has been you know, on some of the beneficiaries? Oh, wow, that's the most interesting part. Um, so the story of Edo Jobs has been one of impact, to be honest. Um, so let me use tech as an example. Right. So uh, we have a hub called Edo Innovates, and we have a tech park called Edo Tech Park. Now, at Edo Innovates, young people are learning skills like cloud computing, um, with, uh, they're learning web development, app development, software development, graphics design, like you just name it. The beautiful thing for us is that your um, level of education, or should I put it, your lack of a university degree doesn't necessarily limit you so much because once you have the tech skills, then you can get the job. So we have young people in Edo State who are working for clients all around the world. And when you see that transformation, that's where the, you know, that's what makes it really inspiring. Because you have a young um, person, that, the most interesting story for me is this uh, young lady. Very, um, she's about maybe 20 now, but she's been at the hub for maybe two and a half years. And when she came, she had finished secondary school. Her dad didn't have money to send her to university. She was from a really um, indigenous community. And when we asked her, so how's the story been now? One year later, when you ha you're, she's, a, she's into software development. You know, from her community, the way you can uh, identify before, the way you could identify a successful young girl is the fact that in her answer, she said, oh, me? I now make more money than married men. <laughs> and then we all had a good laugh. But because that was success before, yes, a man taking care of you, but now right. she has a life of her own. She has clients. In, like I say, I keep saying, we train them so that they can get on, on freelance platforms, get remote work opportunities, and we connect them so that they can actually they are global citizens, and we have some of them already relocating to go and do fantastic jobs. So yeah. And uh, we know, you know, Edo State is known for you know illegal migration and uh, human trafficking. But uh, how has uh, what role has Edo State Skills uh, Development Agency, you know, played in you know curbing this uh, challenge? Okay, a huge role. So uh, how will I explain this? When we when the governor came into office in 2016, Edo State had been number one for decades. Or, um, in terms of su the supply side yeah. of people for mm -hmm. human trafficking and irregular migration, there was the joke that where's the capital of Italy is in Benin, that yeah, kind of thing. I remember that. So, what has happened now is, for example, as at February this year, we were in a meeting with the Swiss government and we were looking at the numbers, and Edo is not in the top five in Nigeria. We have dropped low on that list, and that's because the governor has a very holistic approach to, to human trafficking and irregular migration, to tackling it. And my, it's a four-pillar strategy. My pillar is reducing irregular migration. So for those jobs, our own is to make sure that opportunities are coming to, to the state, international opportunities, local opportunities. So if you have a good way to earn a good living, you will most likely not go and risk your life going in the desert and going through all sorts of um, selling yourself into slavery. So that's what we do every single day. Um, working with young people, the tech programs alone, we've worked with over 41,000 people since um, we started. Um, Edo Jobs is going to be five years old this year. Um, oh, thank you. And then we also have projects in the creative sector where we, are, we are attract major productions into Edo State so that the movies that we have a joke that um, in Nigerian movies, if we don't see Lekki Koyi Bridge, that means I'm not shot a movie. <laughs> so here, yeah, so bringing movies to a door, well, new, new settings, new locations, new stories to tell. So very, some very popular um, shows um, on DSTV have been shot in Edo, and we have 50 movies being shot by Rock Studios this year. So we're just getting into all those partnerships to bring the jobs into the state and get fantastic young people in Edo to take advantage of quite, them. Quite interesting, quite a lot you're doing uh, you. there in Edo State. But you know, how are you meeting up with you know, the rising demand you know, for tech talent globally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what we do is that for our tech talent, for our tech programs, we work with um, the product owners. So for cloud computing now, we work, first of all, we work in areas where there's a high demand. So, and then we work with the key consumers of the talent. So 
um, when Amazon Web Services came to Nigeria, it actually started in Edo State. And we, they, we work with them to train people so they get the global certification. And because they get a global certification, for all of them, we have multiple programs. Um, we have the nano degrees we are doing with um, Udacity and all that. Now, what we do is that part of their program is teaching them how to find remote work, how to go on LinkedIn, have a good profile, so they get job offers from all over the world. And, you know, remember, we're fighting irregular migration. Yeah. So we're the focused. Jaffa like the Jaffa syndrome. Yeah, uh, so before. if you must go go the right way and because there's so much uh, there's so many job opportunities for people with tech skills i mean covid after covid today that's so, the job opportunities keep growing so we keep growing that program to make sure that we have a, our goal is to have the largest concentration of tech talent in nigeria in Edo State. It becomes the Silicon Valley. Exactly. So Nigeria. that's, and we're focusing on the talent angle. So with Edo Tech Park, for example, is a collaboration. And what we're doing there is six months of software engineering and then plugging them into organizations. So it's like a best kept secret because for, we have a bank, one of the biggest banks in Nigeria, now coming to Edo State to set up their development team because they've come. The MD came, he saw our tech guys, he saw all the people being trained. If you walk into Edo University today, tomorrow, any day, you will not, have less, you will not find less than a thousand young people learning different tech skills. So there's a saturation of talent already, and we just create the collaborations to take advantage of Quite that. Quite interesting. Well, we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep tracking you know, you your, 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 your progress, your jobs creation. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Yukine Bodari, MD, Edo State Skills Development Agency. It was great having you on the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, now uh, after the break, we head on to London. That's in a moment. Just stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Business Morning live on Channels Television. Let's head on to London now. We have Juliana uh, standing by right there. Uh, Juliana, good morning. Uh, great to have you. I don't know if we can get her on. Okay. All right, Juliana, I see you now. Great to have you, Juliana. So uh, we see British Retail Consortium. They're saying that the total sales was up about 2.3% uh, higher uh, last month than it was in uh, July 2021. That's good news for retailers. Good morning, Laddie. Oh, yes, well, well, good and bad. So taken in that context, yes, it does um, show that there has been some improvement, 2.3% month on month um, in the overall uh, retail sales. But you only need to uh, scratch a little bit uh, beneath the surface and you can see um, that, um, you know, the data is revealing that, yes, the UK is battling um, its highest inflation in 40 years and it is having a knock-on effect on retail sales and consumer uh, spending habits. One of the reasons why uh, the BRC have reported a month-on-month -month, um, increase is because of inflation. Once you adjust it for inflation, um, it's much lower uh, than that. And if you take a look at the quarter, it does actually reveal that uh, retail sales are dropping, particularly non-food-related uh, sales. Um, uh, people are starting uh, to hold back, not just because of high inflation, but also uh, because wages. Wages are stagnating, people are not getting the increase increases uh, that they believe um, they deserve, which is why uh, we're seeing strikes. And separately from the British Retail Consortium, Barclay Card also revealed credit and debit card uh, uh, spending habits. And again, if you look at the headline figure, it does show that there's a little bit of an increase. But if you look a little bit further, you can see that consumer um, spending habits are changing. Uh, the fact that families... Yeah, I can hear you, Juliana. You can carry on. You can, you can still hear me. Uh, families um, across the UK are starting to go uh, to shops uh, more frequently and they're spending uh, less um, and they are not buying those luxury goods. So all in all, um, everything that we've been discussing for the past couple of months is coming into fruition. We do have those GDP figures uh, for the month of June coming out on Friday. Everybody's anticipating that there'll be a contraction, not only month on month, but in that really important second quarter. Um, we have been told that we are going to go into five technical quarters of recession. So things are looking pretty bleak at a time when uh, we don't have a sitting government. Uh, our caretaker Prime Minister Boris Johnson is off on holiday and uh, the two contenders are up and down the country uh, trying to get people uh, to vote for them. So it's a really strange uh, situation in the UK at the moment, but all the data reveals that people are just uh, not spending like they used to. Quite strange. I guess the, the squeeze is, is squeezing on at this point. Thank you so much, uh, Juliana. I will get you at 1.30. Thank you. 
All right, now, let's uh, head on uh, to the markets now. Let's take a look at what's happening uh, with the Fear uh, Greed Index uh, this morning. Uh, let's see what's happening there. We see it's uh, fear, but it's an improvement we're seeing, uh, talking about the crypto uh, market uh, this morning. We see it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, a fear at this point, but at 42 points, we'll get that uh, back up uh, later on. Yes, yeah, we see that, 42 uh, points there, talking about fear in the crypto market, talking about sentiment uh, right now. Let's look at the market cap. 42 is quite good, quite an improvement we're seeing uh, with, with this uh, uh, number. Let's look at the uh, market cap. Now we see uh, the market cap, the $1.12 trillion, that's up by 0.58%. And we see volume traded in a total crypto space, $87.60 billion, that's up by 92%. Quite a big move there we're seeing with volume, showing that traders are getting... Uh, there, there, there's some skin into this market. Bitcoin dominance, 40.47 percent. We see price of Bitcoin, $23,841. It did get to $24,000, but we saw some profit taking there, pushing the price back to the $23,000. It is quite an improvement, but we still have a lot to look out for. You know, talking about uh, the U.S. Uh, inflation and all of that, that's going to impact most of these markets. We don't know if it's priced in yet at this point. Volume traded, $28.94 uh, billion. All right, let's see price of Ethereum there, $1,777. It's trying to get to that $2,000 mark. We've not been able to hit that yet. It's now about 0.01 percent. Volume traded, $17.46 billion. Let's bring in uh, Rume Ofi now, of uh, Digital Market Analyst. Hello, Rume. Great to have you. Hello, Rume. Good morning. Rume, say hi if you can hear me. All right. Seems I can't get uh, Rume right now. But let's uh, carry on. Let's see uh, the top alt by market cap there. We see BNB. It's uh, having a pullback there. It's had a quite a good run, uh, $325. It's down about 0.26% uh, this morning. We see Cardano, too, also in the red. That's down about 0.24%. We're seeing a lot of sell pressure, you know, coming in with the altcoins. Obviously, Bitcoin dictates you know, the pace in this market. Once uh, Bitcoin sneezes, we see the altcoins react, either down or up. Let's see if we have Rume now. Hello, Rume. Hello, Rume. Good morning. Okay, I don't have Rume again. All right, eCash. That's uh, less than a cent there. It's down 0.58% uh, this morning. XRP, 37 cents. XRP starting to look more like a stable coin at this point. It's been stuck in this 30 cents range uh, for a while now. It's uh, up by 0.08, but it's the only green uh, this morning. But it's still within this 30 cent range. It's not, doesn't look like it's uh, going anywhere, you know, at, at this point. But, you know, we, we still have that SEC issue, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission uh, with XRP either being a security or not. They're still battling that out at this point. But we're seeing the price action. No action, really. It's just still there at 37 cents. Uh, let's uh, move on now to the top five gainers. Let's see who's topping that counter. We see Celsius there. It's $2.06 about 30.72%, uh, and we see Zcash uh, with a privacy token there, $78.95 per token. It's up about 10.61% this morning. And GMT there, uh, one of these uh, running uh, platforms there, it's a dollar two cents, up 7.18%. And we see GRT, one of the oldies in this market, 14 cents, up 5.28%. And Dash, another Oldie, that's been there since before 2017, trading at $56.68 per coin, up 4.29%. So the big movers we're seeing this morning, Celsius, they've had issues for a while now, but you see the price of some investors looking at buying some of those cheap tokens there. It's up 30% this morning. Let's flip over to the top five losers there. We see Lido Dow, it's had quite a run this last month. It's uh, up, down about 8.21%. It did have that rally to about $2.33. It's having a pullback uh, this morning. It was trading less than uh, $2 a while back, but we're seeing it, you know, we're seeing some profit taking going on with this one. Then another uh, favorite of mine there, uh, Optimism, $1.89. It's had quite an incredible run. This was trading about uh, $0.50 cents 
about a month ago, but now it had this uh, run to about $2, got to high about $2, but we're seeing a pullback this morning at $1.89. Uh, it's down 5.39% this morning. Uh, file token, $8.74. Uh, that's also down 4.79%. We see cake uh, token there. That's for the pancake uh, decentralized exchange trading down 3.94%. It did get to $2. It's gotten back some of those uh, losses because this was trading at uh, the highs of about $20 per token. But when we see that downturn in the market, we're seeing it uh, come down at this point. Uh, theta there, $1.62 down 3.02%. Uh, so uh, the market is not looking so bad, you know, talking about the, uh, the crypto market at this time. And uh, that's all we have for the market. We'll keep tracking to see how uh, all of that uh, plays out. But, well, that's uh, the show uh, today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join us at 1.30 for Business Incorporated for more updates and developments in the world uh, of business. And, again, if you want to watch this again, you can go to our YouTube uh, page there and just search for Channel Television. You can check the videos and you see uh, most of our videos there you can watch. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laddie Williams. Bye for now.